On the screen we have a cooling circuit that we are going to use to explain what happens in a cycle. The obstruction of the capillary tube begins. At this time the system works normally. In the evaporator we are going to have a pressure of 15 psi and in the capacitor we have a pressure. This time of 150 psi. Now the partial obstruction of the capillary tube begins to occur. When the obstruction of the capillary tube begins, we will begin to see a noticeable decrease in pressure in the evaporator. The pressure that was before 15 psi is going to start to go down. In this case it goes down to 14 progressively, 13 and the pressure goes down because there is less. Less refrigerant in this area. In the entire area of the evaporator and this pipe there is less refrigerant. However, the compressor continues to suck and continues to discharge the capacitor. The capacitor that before had a pressure of 150 psi is beginning to receive refrigerant at high. However, this area is obstructed and the refrigerant begins to concentrate in this part. Therefore, we are going to have an increase in high pressure. At this moment the high pressure begins to rise from 150 to 155 and we are going to assume that it 160 psi. The increase in pressure is because there is a greater amount of refrigerant at this point. But the following happens. As the compressor continues to suck, it sucks less refrigerant and the low pressure begins to even more. Now, less and less refrigerant is sucked. Therefore, less and less refrigerant is discharged. Although the refrigerant comes out in high pressure, less quantity comes out and each time the of the refrigerant that the compressor is taking out towards the capacitor is less because the is smaller. Therefore, we are going to have less and less refrigerant that is reaching high pressure and high. Therefore, its effect in this area is going to be less. Therefore, as the minutes pass, the high pressure then had risen to 160, 165, assuming these begins to decrease again and can now be found at 150. Notice that the low pressure continues to go down and the high pressure had a peak and now began to down to 150. As the system continues to work, we will have less pressure at this point. We are going to assume that we already have a very low pressure because a few minutes have passed. We can have 5 psi here and here we are going to have a pressure that is below the value that we have. We can already have 130 psi here. Why does that happen? Because the system is already starting. All the refrigerant that was in this area is already condensing. It is becoming liquid and the pressure begins to drop due to the exchange of heat. We already have vacuum pressures. We are going to assume that all the refrigerant has already been suctioned and now we have a high. Every time it goes down more because less and less refrigerant reaches high pressure and high. There is less and less effect of the refrigerant that reaches. And in turn, more and more refrigerant continues to condense. That is the behavior of a system when it suffers an obstruction. When it suffers an obstruction, the low pressure decreases, the high pressure has a peak, then it to decrease and the compressor's amperage consumption always begins to decrease. Depending on where the obstruction occurs, it is very likely that at the exit of the capillary, if obstruction was in the capillary, we have freezing signals at the exit of the capillary. This is also a sample that there was an obstruction at this point. In addition, the condenser begins to lose temperature and the condenser, which is usually about 10. 15 degrees above the ambient temperature is becoming more and more similar to the value of the temperature. See you in the next video.